Hello guys and good evening. This is Gina with Nailed It DIY Studio Hickory and I am coming to you live from, it seems like a place that I come to you live often these days, but it's my dining room. Okay, so um, tonight I've got a really fun topic that we're going to be talking about and um, you may notice in behind me um, there's my mirror. Isn't it beautiful? We talked about um, chalk paint on the mirror. Um, showed you guys that. So if you didn't see my DIY chalk paint mirror, um, go back and look for that video on my Facebook page and then you can kind of see a little bit of my tiered tray, which I'm going to be switching out. Um, I think that's next week. But um, what I'm going to be talking to you guys about what we're going to be thinking through this evening is going to be the dining room table because, you know, it is um, approaching mid-September. And um, even those of us who are not the fall fans and lovers, okay, are having to start to face the music. That fall is coming, people. Fall is coming. And so, um, if you are not... Um, necessarily a lover of all things fall like me it's okay it's okay you don't have to love fall um, but I do love decorating so we're going to talk about um, decorating tonight so if you're joining me um, throw in a comment say a hi send a little wave um, something so I know that you're hearing me loud and clear and as um, we get going tonight so I've got a couple of things that I'm excited to show you and a fun little DIY project that you can do at home yourself. So you can see right now my table um, is pretty much a blank slate. So what I have um, here on um, the center of my table is a table runner, okay? So I'm gonna kind of hold that up. You can see buffalo plaid. I do love a good buffalo plaid. So um, if you watched my Facebook Live last week, then you saw, um, Hey, Johanna, then you saw um, out on my front porch that I had the um, cute little reversible, one side being buffalo plaid, um, mat, right, rug, that's a better word, rug, that I put under my Hey There Pumpkin placemat, okay? So, I also, you if you watched my live last week and if you didn't, go back and, and catch that, you saw my wreath on the front door, having a special wreath um, night um, a week from tomorrow, so sign up for that. And you saw that the bow that I put on the wreath had that little hint of buffalo plaid. Hey, Brandy, around the edge. So, table runner, buffalo plaid. So I'm carrying the buffalo plaid theme from the front porch and if you were, if you could see where I can see right now, where I'm sitting, I've got a, sh a view straight to my front porch. So if you were to come in and um, come on by and see me, guys, anytime, you're welcome. But if you were to come in through my front door, you're going to see the buffalo plaid. And then as you come down the hall, hey, Althea, glad you're here. And as you come down the hall, you've got that straight shot headed into my dining room. So buffalo plaid. Okay, so that's. That's kind of the background of the buffalo plaid. But a couple of things that um, I'm gonna show you guys tonight as I'm working on starting the F decor, the fall decor, okay? So here is something that is, I just love it. It's super cute. And so this is a little um, decor box, okay, that I made. And um, so you can see it's got sides um, and I put, this word here, because as we are approaching the fall season, um, reminding myself to be grateful is very important. Um, it is for me, I need that reminder daily. Um, I need that reminder often. So I figured on this cute little box that I'm gonna put in the center of my dining room table, having that reminder where I'm gonna see it every day was a good spot because um, if you don't know this about me, I love to eat. And so coming to the dining room table to eat, I'm gonna stare at this. It's gonna remind me to be grateful. But um, there's two sides to this and you know, some people sit on the other side of the table and may not see this. So on the other side, I put 
thankful. And um, also a great little reminder that I know I need um, daily, again, y'all, I need a lot of help, I guess, but I need those reminders daily. And so again, being on the dining room table, um, for me, it works. It's a great place to um, get myself in that mindset of being grateful and being thankful every day. So this cutie, oh, you guys can't see that. Hang on one moment, one moment while I just, there we go. Okay, so this cutie is going here, right in the center of my table. Now, one of the other things that you may have learned about me, if you've watched any of the other Facebook Lives, I'm going to see if I can, without being too bumpy, there we go, get that back a little bit, is lately I have this um, not-so-secret obsession with sunflowers. So this box, is you can do so many things with it. It's so versatile and um, so useful, handy in a lot of different rooms. But um, I felt like here for the dining room, what I wanted to do was to pull out um, my not so secret obsession now, the sunflower, right? So I have got here, you guys, um, if you've watched any of my lives, you're gonna recognize these cute little blue mason jars. So I used these cuties whenever um, I decorated the tiered tray for the patriotic theme because, you know, I love that. But um, anyway, I thought it was, was super cute and just fun because, you know, I love pops of color to put in. And again, I'm using fake sunflower, sunflowers. Hey, Susan, how are you? I'm using fake sunflower, sunflowers. I'll spit it out in a minute because keeping the humans alive in my house is enough of a job for me. And um, I don't need plants to also try to take care of and keep alive. Oh, oh, Ella, thank you, Ella. I love the blue mason jars too, Ella. Ella, you and I are like super kindred spirits. I just know it. So I've actually got um, three of those cute little blue mason jars. So I am going to use my cute little sunflowers and, um, and the blue mason jars and put those in my little box here with um, grateful, thankful on the other side. Okay, so this is how I am starting my slow transition to the fall decor, okay? And remember, the sunflower um, still signifies for me, people see it and see fall, and by the way, um, let's see, today's Wednesday, so um, by Friday, um, definitely by the weekend, you're gonna start seeing some pictures on our social media of some of our new designs, and huge hint here, if you, <laughs> have not caught on to that already. Ah, oh, thank you, Carla. Sunflowers are in a lot of our new designs. And so, um, so very fall, but to me, the sunflower is my end of summer flower, right? I'm clinging to summer, it's my end of summer flower. Okay, so this is what I'm doing to start making the transition in my dining room to fall. But then I wanna show you guys because I have always wanted to to have, buy, make, and so I decided, hey, I love DIY, so why not make um, placemats, okay? So look at this, this is, can you guys see that? This is that sisal rope, and I made this round placemat, and I'm gonna show you guys how to make it. It is so super easy. You're not gonna believe how easy and affordable it is to make this um, placemat. So I made this placemat, and these are going to be um, what I am going to use. Hopefully you guys can somewhat, can you see that? Can, can you see that in front of me? Hopefully you guys can somewhat see that. So these are what I'm using um, around my table as the placemats um, for this fall season. So what I'm gonna do is give you guys a super um, easy tutorial right now on how you can make, how you can DIY your own little placemats like this. I just think they're perfect for the season um, because I, and I love to, the other thing I love when I'm thinking about um, decor in my home and, and as I'm looking at my table and you know, I'm gonna start converting the rest of the dining room and obviously some other places in the house too. But one of the things that I love is having different textures 
And I think having different textures when you're thinking about your home and you're thinking about your design in your home, it really adds um, just a lot of depth. It adds a lot of personality. For me, you know, I look at this and, and it feels fun, it feels festive, it slightly feels summery to me, but at the same time, fallish, if that even makes sense, because, you know, it's got that, like, almost fall looking, if you think, like, hay bales and that kind of, of um, decor that we would use for fall, so it's kind of got that feel, but to me, it still feels summery, and so I'm trying, look, I've got my sleeveless top on, I'm clinging to summer, guys, I'm trying as hard as I can to not let it go, so, so different textures, so I've got the, the texture and um, the design of the round, I've got the buffalo plaid with the square design, and then the box, and, you know, the fun little pop with the sunflowers and the blue jars, so I love having and mixing and matching different textures so don't be afraid when you are thinking about decorating inside your home don't be afraid to experiment and and pull in some different textures okay so let me show you guys how we are gonna make these placemats so first thing you need this is really hot by the way so I'm gonna try not to burn myself if I scream that's because the hot glue gun burned me but I'm gonna try really hard not to let that happen but you need a hot glue gun okay this is your tool for creating your own um, DIY placemat. So you need a hot glue gun. By the way, here's a helpful hint. Have plenty of glue sticks on hand because it is gonna take way more glue sticks than you would anticipate um, to make this beauty. So make sure you've got plenty because it's really a disappointment to run out of glue sticks when you're in the middle of a placemat, okay? Speaking from personal experience there. So you need that. You need some type, okay, so look at this. I want you guys to see how rough this is. Some type of fabric scrap, okay? Um, this is just some fabric that I had lying around the house, and so I cut some off, and that was it. It was simple as that. So this is kind of um, like a canvassy, almost duck cloth type material. It really doesn't fully matter what kind of material you are using here. So if you've got any scrap fabric around your home, use this um, to make the backing of the placemat. So let me show you the back. You can see the back of this, okay? That's where the fabric is. And basically what this does, you're gonna see in a minute, is it gives me a place to glue onto to, so I can coil around my rope. And then that's um, what you need next. Sorry, the end of my rope fell down. You need rope. Okay, so that's that's it. You, those are the only things. Okay, hang on. Scissors. You're going to need scissors. All right, but other than that, I promise that's all you need to DIY your own placemats. So, um, oh, I'm so, oh, bye, Susan. I'm glad you were able to watch for a few minutes. All right, so, so you need rope. Now, what I did to make this size um, placemat, which is, I should have remeasured it, um, so I'm going off my memory, and if anybody knows me with numbers, I'm kind of ish about numbers, so let's go with like 13-ish inches, I think would be the, the measurement across my placemat. If that's wrong, I'll correct it. Hey, Trina, and I'll let you guys know. So to make your own rope placemat or sisal placemat, that is 13-ish inches wide, you need 50 feet of rope. Now, I got my rope at Harbor Freight because Harbor Freight has um, big, they have 100 feet of rope um, for a really good price. And so it ends up, I, I, you know, I already had this material, so I didn't buy the fabric that's gonna be the backing of it. Um, so really the only thing I bought was more glue sticks because it does take more glue sticks than you expect and the rope. So, so really I've got, you know, just a few dollars into each of these placemats. So it's a pretty good bargain, pretty good bang for the buck. And so what I did with the rope, that was a fun, um, a fun time because I wanted to be a little more precise. In the beginning, when I first started making my placemats, I thought, oh, I'll just kind of wing it. You know, I'll kind of guesstimate and know when I'm halfway through my 100 feet of rope that I bought at Harbor Freight. 
And then I got part of the way through and decided I didn't like that plan. And so <laughs> I wanted to measure. So we went to the driveway, stretched the rope out, and then folded it over on itself, cut it in half to get to the 50 feet. And, and um, I had a placemat in progress at the time. If you guys see a little head, I've got somebody sneaking in here, <laughs> sneaking in here trying to say hello. But I had a placemat in progress at the, t at the moment and I wanted it to be precise. So I ended up taking the rope. Anyway, it was, I figured it out and I got to 50 feet of rope. So 50 feet of rope is what you need to make a 13-ish placemat. Okay. So then all you're going to do guys, hopefully, can you see that okay? Hopefully you can see that okay. If you guys can't see, let me know. I'm going to try to um, bring you a little closer because, you know, we're friends here. So we're going to try to get, ooh, okay. I'm, I'm scrunching down. We're going to try to get a little up close and personal here. So this is how easy it is. So I've got my fabric. It's laid out. Get your glue gun nice and hot. I'm going to reach over. Sorry for that because I... <laughs> okay sorry about that guys now you're back with me um i had to reach over to get the glue sticks because lo and behold what did i do with the glue sticks but leave them on the wrong side of the table so i moved the glue sticks over because like i said you're gonna need several glue sticks let me see if i can get readjusted here you're gonna need several glue sticks to be able to complete your project so have glue sticks handy have those at your fingertips because you're going to need them. All right, let's see if we can get this set. All right, so you guys can see that. Got my glue sticks, got my rope. So all you're going to do, and you got to be careful because obviously, you know, hot glue is hot, burned fingers, blisters, all of that hurts. So you're going to take your hot glue and you're just going to, um, hopefully you guys can see that, put a little dab. That's a precise terminology in the center. And you're going to lay down your rope. And I'm gonna to try to put this up close after this starts to get a little bit more sticky. You're gonna, can, woo, there we go. That was not a good shot, but you're gonna lay down your rope. And basically, you're gonna start coiling it around on itself. So you want to add more glue here. And you're just gonna start the process, that was a little hot, can't lie, of, of coiling that around, okay? So I'm gonna to try to get that to stick and then I'm gonna put this a little bit closer so you guys can see, sorry, letting that dry just a minute, so you guys can see um, how it's beginning to stick. All right, super gluey fingers. <laughs> so let me get some of that off. All right, so you can see, hopefully, how you're just starting to coil that around. All right, can you guys see that? So all you're gonna do is continue to put glue around the outside, coil it around and press it down. Let it dry, okay? Add more glue. I know I'm not actually doing that step because I um, tend to not do well when I'm talking and working with hot glue. Inevitably, I burn myself and hot glue does hurt when you do that. So you're just gonna continue doing those actions. So just putting glue around it, coiling it around, okay? Have some patience. I mean, this would be something you could definitely do while you're um, watching your favorite show on television, whatever. But you're just gonna keep doing that. So you can see the process here is started. And so you're adding the hot glue and you're cooling it around, cooling it around until you use all 50 feet. And use all 50 feet because um, what I did is I got out one of my um, dining plates you know, the, like a, a dinner plate, um, got that out and made sure that when the dinner plate was on the placemat, that you could actually see the edges, the edges of the placemat sticking out. Okay, that was important to me. If that's not important to you, then you could use less than 50 feet, but that was important to me. So I measured it in that way. That was my measuring tool, my dinner plate, putting it on top. So again, you're just going to keep, and I'll let you guys see the inside of that. You're just going to keep cooling it around and cooling it around until you've used all 50 feet. And then all you're going to do at that point is get your scissors and trim the material. So this is my canvas material. So once it's you know, I've used all 50 feet and got that on there. I'm just gonna take the scissors 
and you're just gonna okay y'all I am clearly having some difficulties here so you're just gonna take the scissors and you're just gonna trim around the edges okay so that you you can if you looked at this up close I'll try to show it up close on the back I mean it is not precise right but you can't see any of that from the front from the front it looks great so that's all you're gonna do once you've got it glued down and it gives it a good I mean this is not very bendable I mean it's pretty pretty good and solid so just trim around the edges and it's as simple as that. So, um, obviously I did um, two, if, depending on how many you wanna make. And you can buy um, at um, certain stores, Hobby Lobby is one of them, you can buy um, sisal rope that's already in a 50 foot measurement, but it's a little more expensive. So to me, it was worth saving a little bit of money, getting the 100, um, feet of rope at Harbor Freight and then having fun measuring that out to 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 save a little bit of money so so that's that's how I did it and that's how my placemats look so these are going on my dining room table and then I am going to be adding some other things and and behind me my beautiful um summer leaves going to be saying bye to those soon so join me next Wednesday night at 8 and we're going to start to talk about switching over my tiered tray display to um, more of a fall theme that's going to match and be in alignment with um, what I'm doing here on my dining room table. Okay and also guys you are going to see one of our amazing new designs that's going to appear here um, with my tiered tray so I'm super excited about that. So I hope that you guys enjoyed um, tonight's um, DIY placemat tutorial and seeing how to start to refresh your dining room for the fall season. So if you make some placemats at home, um, put a picture up and share it because we would love to see um, what you guys are doing. So don't forget, you can book your appointment in the studio and I would love to see you guys. So have a great night and I'll see you soon.